Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to meet with some of our leaders from Convergence. Today, we're going to have Adrienne Gasco, Judy Zugish, Louise Lemur Barre, Deb Essen, Linda Hartshorn, and Karen Dondi. If you're not familiar with Convergence, Convergence is the Week of Fiber, seven day fiber art conference. It's July 15th through the 21st, and it's going to be in Knoxville, Tennessee this summer. We have a lot of events that will be happening during this time. We have the marketplace, good chance to buy fiber, test drive that loom, and you may find something new and wonderful there. We have all kinds of exhibits, the fashion show, keynote tours, and so much more. We have a variety of sessions that are available. Everything from a um, 90 minute seminar to a three hour seminar to one, two, and three day workshops. Now, you have to be a member to take a class, so keep that in mind. And also, if you have a CVP, you get 25% off of your classes. Today, we're going to speak with Adrian Gaskell. Adrian is going to talk about exploring the Omasatsu Kumihimo Braid. It's a two-day workshop. It's Tuesday through Thursday on July 19th through the 20th. Hey, Adrian. Hi, how are you? I am good. I'm so happy to be here and get to tell you something about my class. So let me just give you a little fashion show of my what I'm planning on offering. You're starting off with a great background. <laughs> let me start my slide. OK, so this class is called Exploring the Oimatsu Braid. I should have added to it and beyond because we're gonna do so much more than that. And so I hope you'll join me for the class because what you can expect here is we're going to first take this braid, which is basically um, two braids being worked simultaneously, which sounds a little daunting, but we're gonna demystify it. We're gonna um, reverse engineer it. And by probably the beginning of the first day, you're going to see that this is really a very easy braid when you really stop and analyze it. And I have some simple uh, instructions for that. And so there will be lots of hands on learning. Boy, isn't that great? We haven't done that in so long. <laughs> and we're going to talk about traditional Japanese fibers. We're going to work with them, handle them, fondle them, uh, the silks, the metallics. But in addition to that, we this braid really lends itself to being uh, worked with alternate materials such as leather, chain, and other fibers as well. We're going to even learn how to put embellishments in the braid. There really is no limit to what you can do with this specific braid, and that's why I felt it was a great braid for people to really, you know, get their teeth into and explore in depth. And at the end of this class, you're going to learn, know how to create your own braid designs, as I've done with some of these. So when you're looking at traditional fibers, we're going to do things like work with silk and use it in thick and thin, just for one example. The alternate materials, these are examples of blue, using leather and chain. Of course, we're going to go into so many other things as well. And this is what I call my color change oimatsu. This is a braid um, technique that I developed. And so you're going to get an exclusive here because you see how the braid changes colors and you can do it however you want in little parts, half and half, whatever. And you'll learn that whole technique. And this is basically a class for anyone who enjoys thinking outside the box. This is even though you're going to learn my techniques and the basics of a, a really nice traditional Japanese braid, you're going to be encouraged not to paint inside the lines and do your own thing. And you'll have all the tools to do that when you get done with this class and you'll just be able to take off running and create what you want. So I hope everyone will want to join me for this. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about what kind of experience do people need to get the most out of this class? Like I've done Kumihimo on the little styrofoam thingy, 
but I've never used a Mori dye. Now I'm assuming you need some Mori dye experience to get the most out of this class. It would be helpful if you had Mara dye experience, but like I said, this is a very traditional braid and traditional braids, what that means is it's very simple steps. So if I were to show you the hand movements on this braid, there's basically two movements. And so even if you've never used a Mara dye before, you would be able to master this braid because we're gonna start from kindergarten and work up through a master's degree basically. So if you have um, Mara dye experience, you'll probably progress faster and do a lot more. But if you don't, it, it's not something that's gonna be a big problem for you. I would like people to have uh, Mara dye experience, but if you don't, there's certainly room for that too. So people could email you and maybe talk a little bit about their experience and whether or not it'll, they need more. Sure, I'd, I'd love to, to entertain that. And, you know, I can even refer people to uh, learning tools before class that would help them as well. And um, if someone doesn't have a Mara dye, I can also provide that if they want to, you know, for instance, if someone wants to try traditional equipment, which is what a Mara dye is, um, a braiding stand, <laughs> um, I have Mara Dye and I'll probably bring about three to class. So I'd need to know who would uh, want to use one of mine if they need to. And since your class starts on Tuesday, um, they can also explore the options of maybe a vendor is going to be selling the Mari dyes there and they could get one, um, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't looked at the vendor list to know. Okay. But um, we could definitely look into that. And you are providing the majority of the materials? I think you've already said that, I forgot. Oh yes, everything. Okay. Everything you need for the class. The only thing people should bring is their Mara dye, their Tama and uh, counterweight. And again, if somebody is missing any of that, I have a plethora of, of equipment. So you could contact me and I, I'm flying Southwest. I can bring it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who has knows anything about um, Kumihimo, Adrian is the person to talk to. This is, we're so excited to have you here teaching with us at Convergence. So again, this is Adrian Gasco. It's gonna be exploring the Amatsu Kumihimo braid. It is Tuesday, uh, July 19th and Wednesday the 20th. And again, if you have questions, if you're not sure if you wanna, if you've got the experience you need, contact Adrian. I think you'll be surprised how much you can, um, what can, you can do in this class. So thank you so much, Adrian. My pleasure. Next is Judy Zugish, Luminous Ambitions. Oh, the name itself makes me want to take the class. This is a one-day workshop. It is Saturday, July 16th. Hi, Judy. Hi there, Kathy. How are you? I am good. Good. So, um, Thanks for letting us do this to share what we, whoops, I st thought I started my video. There we go. Um, got me now? You're great. Yes. You're good. All righty. Uh, so I'm not getting the screen you're looking at. So I'm just trying to see what that's all about. Let me bring that up a little bit. Um, so I'm really glad to be able to share this with you. For a lot of people who attend Convergence, basketry might be kind of a first step in the water. And this particular piece was really designed to be exactly that. So it's um, an opportunity to learn some of the basic concepts around making a basket, 3D forms. It's also exciting because it's made with willow bark. So this is what willow bark starts out to be. I raise it in my garden here. It has five, four and three year um, lifespans with me before I first get it into a big roll. And then those rolls, each of them get chosen for your pieces. And I go through a soaking and processing so that we wind up when we first start weaving and it's new to your hands with something that feels like spaghetti and linguine soft and it moves and it's moist and it's easy on the hands and it constructs beautifully and then of course it goes into drying processes and changes 
So it's really exciting to do basketry. If you're a complete beginner to this, um, Bark is an exciting place to begin. If you already know something about basketry but want to get introduced to Bark, this is a really exciting place to dive in as well. And the piece has been designed to do exactly that. So here is one all lit up, being luminous. And it's become my new absolutely favorite thing to share with all levels because the success is always there and the diversity is always there too. So it begins with um, some basic form on a mold. I think we have a picture there, Kathy. There you go. So you can see in this, the basic 12 form, you can see insides and outsides of bark. So right from the beginning, you become a designer. And there's a lot of diversity that develops because of that. So the pieces almost become like a little family. We're all related when we get done, but no two are alike. So some basic um, uh, spoke work, which I've refined to quarter inch pieces. That's kind of your uh, linguini and then some eighth inch pieces that have been refined to be the twiners, another real fundamental step in basket making, uh, secure that shape for you. And those uh, also feel like your little spaghetti and they have insides and outsides and choices you can make too. So that's a couple of different looks at it there on the base. And let's look at our next, there you go. So on this particular finished piece, you're looking at the construction of staying on a mold. Uh, that in itself varies from basket to basket. So it's a really great thing to learn. And I have a few tricks to share with you because I've done this a while. So I, I like to share tricks. And um, you can see outside bark, inside bark. You can see some weaving patterns. And right there at the top is a particularly delicious folded rim border that comes from the Northwest coast and applies itself beautifully to flat and flexible materials. That will be one of the options. We also have a different finished border that I like equally well. So, you know, depending upon your interest and pace, uh, it can be adapted to all levels. Let's see our next, there we go. So there's a kind of a a potpourri, if you will, of what happens when you get a group of people together and you share these thoughts and selections of materials and wander through the many options that you have. This is where it gets really exciting for me to see just how different they can be and yet how related. And um, many times I, I love to have the little lighting ceremony that we can do and um, you know, just sort of really enjoy the range that we have because then you can go home and very successfully repeat these steps with many different materials actually. So it's a great intro. Yeah, so this is two of them side by side. Um, you can see the range again, also that glossy texture that's part of the willow bark. And if you enjoy nature and you enjoy collecting from nature uh, as a basket maker, that just really gets to be part of the excitement of um, experimenting and also gathering and connecting. So it happens all over the country that we have different natural materials. So a lot of these skills you might learn could adapt to something that you have in your area, perhaps not the willow bark, but something else. So I, I hope that we'll get uh, people to come that are really you know, willing to just kind of jump in. You, you will have success with this and whether or not you uh, have done baskets before, even as a basket maker, if you've not had a lot of chance to work with natural materials, it's a really nice, nice one day workshop for doing that. Judy, I love a class where I walk in and everything I need is there. Since I always tend to forget something, this is a great way to start um, really getting into basketry, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It, it, it is a really fun way and it, uh, there's no pressure in it, but there's a lot of learning. And I bring little tools that might be necessary. So honestly, you do. You come in and walk out um, feeling like you really absorbed a lot in a day. I can just imagine having that on my desk and kind of looking at it and going, I made that, you know, a lot of pride. And that was such a great time. I made that. So yeah, this sounds my, like a wonderful class, Judy. 
Yeah, thank you, Kathy. My son made one with me being sort of like, oh gosh, what are you doing, mom? And he has it in his kitchen and he has it with the small spoons that he uses because he's a very good cook. So it's become a piece of pride that's in constant use for him. Oh, I bet. I yeah. bet. Thank you so much, Judy. This is Luminous Ambitions. It's a one-day workshop. It is Saturday, July the 16th. And as always, if you want more information, go on the website where you register and you can read the description and you can also see what supply list there happens to be. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Louise Lemur Baribou. Barabai. I'm terrible at this. It is Color Study with Tecate and Beyond. This is a three-day workshop. It is Tuesday through Thursday, and July 19th through the 21st, and it looks gorgeous. Hello, Louise. Hello, hello. <laughs> so uh, if you have trouble to, uh, to say my, my, my name, I will have trouble to speak English also, so, <laughs> so it's okay. So, um, I think Tacket is my favorite weave, uh, weave structures. Um, I've learned, I've done so much. I've learned, I've read everything about it and I've used it a lot in my, uh, my weaving. So I started, the, so if I could describe the, the, the techniques a little bit, it's part of the double weave category. It's a weft face weaving, but it's also the reversible, the, the backside, or there might be no backside, like two different face of the fabric. And the, the, the warp is very, it's finer than the weft, so it doesn't show too much. So it's really by using all kinds of uh, different yarns and different colors that you will get the beautiful uh, tacky weaving. So I started to study this book in Chinese. I, I couldn't read the Chinese, but I, I was very fascinated by this uh, little example of it. So I started from what I, I saw in, the, in that book, like different pictures of it. So um, during the workshop, we will be working with the, for, uh, well, well, two or three or four or five uh, web colors. Uh, at the moment, I will show you some of my work uh, where I used uh, four colors for weft, uh, one after the other, repeating all the time. Uh, so these uh, next photos will be uh, all, they were all done on shaft, uh, shaft loop and some on 12 or uh, 16 harnesses. Louise, during, yes. Are you sharing your screen? Oh, gee, 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 gee. Uh, good that I have somebody to. Uh, Voila. I'm sorry. Is that there okay? we go. Okay. So, well, this was a book I studied a little bit, uh, Chinese book, but the beautiful images that were in that book were very inspiring for me. So uh, I will show you some example of my weaving that I did with uh, four colors on, on a shaft loom, 12 or 16 shaft loom. During the workshop, we'll be using uh, eight um, shafts uh, table looms, but there will be instructions for using more chef if you have, uh, if the participant have uh, other kind of looms at home. So this is, you know, worth four colors, but you see on a shaft loom, it looks like a jacquard almost because it's, you could really uh, do different shapes. So this was the example that you started the, when presenting me. So I just, you know, wanted to show you what those four colors, uh, rayon um, uh, threads, the beautiful shadings that you get in the weaving, uh, that weaving. So after I, uh, my first, almost my, one of my first wall hanging that I did was a study of, of uh, using the same motif, but with different yarn, different colors. And uh, it was, you know, so exciting that I, I, I really, I realized that it was was for me and it was something I could do with that. So I continue uh, working on it. I did different yardage. And um, here I have an example of a, a one side uh, using cotton yarns plus a, a, a gold metallic thread. And you could see that the, on the back side, it's completely, completely different uh, colors when you're concerned about the colors of it. And um, more after that, I used the uh, metal, like uh, the stainless steel uh, warp with brass, uh, um, uh, brass uh, copper and two different uh, stainless steel, one dark, one light. And it was so inspiring for me. So I did a lot of little shapes for, you know, wall hanging. Uh, 
and I did brooches and I did uh, after that uh, more artwork. I was invited in a show where uh, different artists from different media were invited to do uh, some things with metal. So I did those columns. So it was flat on the loom, but it was attached uh, to be a, a shape like that. I did this it was my sales. We don't, you don't see the tacketed too much yet because they're, they were very fine, but it was everyone, each one of them was very different from the others. So this was done in a, in a, I think a very small loom, not small loom, but a few uh, harnesses, maybe uh, eight at the, mo at the most. So after that, I did a study on for rugs because tacketty could be used for any kind of, of weaving, could be very soft, depending on the kind of uh, yarn to use, or it could be very uh, uh, strong or uh, that you could use for, for rugs. So I did, this was also an example of four colors and uh, it, it became a, a collection of rugs. It was, uh, I would say quite uh, successful. So, and you could see here the back side, and here I have only one side, but I did different rugs using tacketty all the time. So um, what to bring at the workshop? You need uh, at least an eight shaft table loom. Uh, if you have a, uh, another loom that has more shaft, we'll bring it, but eight shaft is enough. A PC computer with Fiberworks install, like the silver version of it. Uh, a certain, um, uh, four to six or more uh, flat shuttles so, so that they are easy to, to wind the, the thread on. Uh, lots of yarn, <laughs> lots of yarn for weft. Um, it could be a rayon, cotton, wool, uh, mixed fibers, uh, and the, the weft yarn should be a little bit thicker than the warp. The warp is a, about approximately a 16 to cotton or another kind of fiber. But the participant will be, uh, in a couple of weeks from now, will be advised of more specifically on the yarns to, to bring or to prepare the loom with. And uh, we will be using also, I will make a short presentation of uh, I weave it because it's very useful when you weave on a, on a table loom. It's a software that brings you all the information quite uh, instantly. So the, the workshop itself, uh, working with a eight shaft loom, will be, um, will be study with a uh, three color, uh, three color tacote. This is a bound weave, just an aspect of it, but it's not the real, you know, uh, uh, when you, you have it in front of you, but it's uh, one way to show you that different colors, mixing of colors, uh, uh, a beer. Hey, Louise, and, uh, yes. let me ask you something. Um, now, you're saying they have to have a table loom, they shouldn't have a floor loom. Well, they could have a floor loom, a table loom is easier to um, to change, you know, to because it's it's only okay. on the side of the loom. Uh, floor loom, right. you have to go under to change it. So. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, so many times it's like a table loom won't work. This will be great. Yeah. And the other yeah. thing is I put in the chat um, Fiberworks PCW because that's where that uh -huh. software comes from, correct? Yes, yes. All right. Because people may not know where to get this uh -huh. ahead okay. of time. So you might okay. want to contact them if you don't have the software already. Yeah, okay. Um, I hate to cut you off, but oh, no, I'm no, going to no, need no. to. Oh, God, just show you images. For I colors. know, they're beautiful. Yeah, just go through them real quick. Um, and I never <laughs> thought of using Turn Tacate for a rug. What a great idea. Yeah, this was for, on Jacquard, but just, just to show you how many colors you could get with oh, a yeah. few shuttles. Yeah. This is a beautiful, beautiful workshop. I oh, encourage people uh, to... Um, um, the, the, the again, <laughs> look at what you're going to need. And this is also online, uh, yeah. everything that you're going to need. And like she said, she will send you uh, the warping instru instru uh, I, I hope how you instrument. How you need to warp it. <laughs> I hope my English was not too bad. Your English was delightful, much better than my French. Uh -huh. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Louise. Okay. Again, this is Louise Lemou. Bay you bay. I'll never get this correct. Okay, it's perfect. color study with mm -hmm. Tacate and beyond. If you're not enchanted by the looks of this weave, oh, three day workshop, Tuesday through Thursday. Thank you so much, Louise. Sorry, I had to cut you off. <laughs> Next up, we have Deb Essen playing with profile drafts. This is a one day workshop, Monday, July the 18th. Hi, Deb. Hi, Kathy. How are you? I'm good. Take it away. 
Thank you, Rhea. Hey, guess what? It stopped snowing in Montana and now it's raining, which makes me do my little happy dance. I'm doing my little happy dance out here. So I, it's really kind of ironic that I, I'm watching Louise's presentation going, oh, I really want to take that class and I'm teaching. And her class is where you have to bring a lot of stuff and you're going to have a lot of things to learn and it's going to be really great. And this class that I'm talking about with profile drafting is probably one of the easiest classes for things that you have to bring. You need to bring some quarter inch graph paper, you need to bring a pencil, and you need to bring an eraser. And if you so remember, a ruler is helpful as well. So that's it. It can all fit in your purse and you can come and do this class. And for those of you that aren't familiar with profile drafts, what I like to say about for profile drafts is that they are the shorthand for weaving drafts. What we'll learn to do is we'll learn how to create a profile draft and we'll create the drawdown, we'll create the threading, the tie up, the treadling to make a design on our graph paper. Then what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to take that profile draft, which you may have seen some in books and gone, that makes no sense for threading. How, how, that, that makes no sense whatsoever for treadling. We're going to show, I'm going to show you how to take that profile draft and convert it into weave structures. And we'll be learning a lot about block weave structures. So if you've heard the term block weaves and have never been able to wrap your head around it, this is the class for you because we will talk a lot about block weaves and how they work, how they work with profile drafts. We'll create our own profile drafts. We're going to take those profile drafts convert them into a thread by thread draft together. Then we're going to play around with converting your profile draft. You'll be able to convert it to another weave structure. I mean, it is such a versatile, wonderful tool to have in your toolbox. And if you are a real beginner and you maybe have only been weaving for a year maybe, and you're like, oh, can I take this class? Absolutely. Absolutely take this class because it'll get you off on the right foot as you start going through your weaving experience. If you're an experienced weaver and you've been weaving for a really long time, but you've never played with profile drafts, this class is for you and for everyone in between. It's just one of those classes that once this clicks by the end of the day, you'll probably go, and why haven't I used this tool before? Why? Huh? And I one of the big draws for me is I remember when I was, oh, I've probably been weaving for two or three years. I, I was a very new weaver. And I found one of the Marguerite Porter Davison, not the, the green book that we all love and adore, which has all these four shaft things, but it had these drafts that made no sense to me. And it wasn't until much later that I realized that they were all profile drafts. And then I kicked myself for years because I hadn't bought that book because I didn't understand what it was doing and what I should do with it. So you'll be able to understand those when we get done with this class. And then you can use them to create all kinds of wonderful things. And yes, we will be doing it with graph paper and pencil but I will show you how to do it with your own computer programs as well. But you have to wait to the end of the class to hear about the easy way, because I don't know about you, but when I actually do something, rather than just read about it or click through some keys, but I actually do it by hand, I understand a concept so much better. Um, and so I'm gonna try and help everybody out to, um, that all these different learning styles and I've taught this class both via Zoom and live. And live is really fun because we can share you know, with each other. We can work in teams and um, you can have someone there to help you. But it is a fun class. And like I said, there's hardly anything you need to bring with you. It can go in your purse and you're off and running. So. It's going to be, I have no idea which day it is. It's <laughs> Monday, Monday, July 18. Thank you. <laughs> this I, is all I know about convergence is that 
I'm arriving on Friday. I'm shopping on Saturday because I always make sure I underpack. So you guys might see me in the same outfit for about four days running because I need room to pack all the stuff I'm buying in the vendor's hall in my suitcase. And then um, I'm teaching. So it'll be grand fun. And you know, I have my email and my um, website address in the chat. And if you have questions, you can always email me. I answer all emails that come my way. And that particular piece, that picture in front of you is a summer and winter, which was actually over my shoulder with Esmeralda, uh, my handy studio assistant. And we'll be playing with all kinds of stuff to get you off and running with profile drafting. Well, one of the things we, we had talked about, I think it was yesterday, is that people will say, oh, I, I don't want to take that class because I don't even know anything about pro trail profile drafting it's like that's why you take the class so exactly, yeah exactly this will be a great way to, like you said to get you off and running thank you so much deb i appreciate uh, you being on today playing with profile drafts one day workshop monday july 18th thanks kathy see you later next up we have linda hartshorn linda's going to be talking about um weaving in a par parallel universe. I always love that name. It's a three-day workshop, Tuesday through Thursday. Hi, Linda. Hi, Kathy, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. So um, yes, I'm really excited to be coming back to Convergence and especially excited to be presenting this class again. Um, and I've been teaching it live now. It's a very popular class. I've taught it a lot during the pandemic um, over the internet, as you know, uh, but, um, I'm really happy to be teaching it live at Convergence. So for this class, you're going to need an eight shaft loom. And although we are working on eight shafts, the things we are learning are applicable toward any number of shafts. So that's good. Um, what I like about these weaves on parallel threadings is they are so colorful. And I don't know, if you look at my studio, you can see that I really love color like many of us. So. Knowing these techniques, it's a really great way to get more color into your weaving, um, just make them more interesting, more vibrant, and um, that's a good thing. Uh, so for this particular workshop, you're gonna work on your own loom. You're gonna weave a lot of different samples on one threading, and um, you'll have to change your tie up at some point. And you'll be surprised to see how much variation you can create on a single threading. The structures we're going to focus on are echo twills and a gin, which is the weave formerly known as turn tacate. Uh, these two weaves are really compatible to be woven on the same warp without having to change the set or anything like that. So you can use the same colors. And uh, we'll be using a lot of different wefts and doing a lot of different treadling variations. So, I wanted to start out by just explaining briefly for those of you who don't know, um, people often ask me, well, what is a parallel threading? What does that even mean? So imagine you're sitting down to thread your loom. Say you have an eight shaft loom. Instead of threading your loom one, two, three, four, what if, what if we added more threads in between up a certain number of shafts higher? So for example, what if instead of threading one, two, three, four, I threaded one and then went up four shafts and threaded a five, two, and then six, three, and then seven, four, and then eight. So if you can visualize that, that's like having two lines that are parallel of threading in your draft. If you threaded each one of those lines a different color, that's, that's what happens. What's gonna happen is you're going to get just really amazing uh, color play in your work that you wouldn't have if you were just threading one color in your warp. So I'm gonna show you, um, I have some slides to bring up. Um, here we go. So for this workshop, we're gonna be working with four warp colors. Uh, that's a new experience for a lot of people. Um, it's really not that hard once you kind of get over it. I actually really love warping with uh, four warp colors. It just adds so much color and interest. Um, and when people look at the threadings I give them, a lot of times they're like, oh my gosh, this looks so complicated. But when you actually sit down to thread them, you will find that there is a rhythm to them. 
And you'll also find that um, having this repeating color sequence in, in the threads really, really can help you keep your place in the draft. So um, this, this fabric really illustrates what the echo effect is. So because I have four lines of parallel threading in this fabric, and each line is threaded a different color, you just see all those little rainbow waves of echo in this fabric. Do you see that there's like a turquoise area and then there's a blue area and then there is a magenta area and then a yellow green area, just all radiating out around the circles. So this is the effect you get with parallel threadings. And I just, uh, just love weaving these kinds of weaves. Now on the same threading, it's very possible to just change up the treadling a little bit. I like hear the same, the same uh, draft has just been woven with a, an extended threading, just making the threading longer and just changed it a bit and then try a different weft color and wow. So people are re really, really surprised that they can make such very different looking fabrics on the same warp by changing the treadling and by changing the color. And here's another, here's some more examples of just, uh, these all are woven on the same threading. So um, I always encourage people to put on a really long warp because um, after taking this workshop, people do a lot of experimenting during the workshop and after, and they find that they can, um, you know, weave a whole bunch of different fabrics on a long warp. The warp takes a while to put on, so you might as well have fun with it once you get it on the loom, make a whole bunch of projects. And all the projects that you'll make are uh, single shuttle weaves. So they go really fast. Um, that last slide was some echo fabrics. This is gin. And um, these are both woven also on the same warp and same threading. So you can just get things that look very, very different. Um, so we're gonna learn some different techniques in this workshop. Um, I say that this workshop is for intermediate advanced weavers. I do sometimes get adventurous beginners, that's fine. Uh, so what you're gonna learn some, maybe some new terminology and some new concepts in here. One of the things we need to know to do these weaves is we need an understanding of network drafting. So we'll learn about that. Also, we use lots of advancing threadings. Uh, that might be a new concept for some and advancing treadlings. We also use software um, just to illustrate, um, just to illustrate these weaves and to show how they can be created. It is not necessary to have software for this workshop, but it is a good way to show things. And actually it inspires many, many people to get software and to try software because of what's possible. So um, that this is-, is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I love this one. I have it on the wall behind me here. All of them are beautiful. This is one of those workshops. It's like, I don't know that I can ever make anything that beautiful, but I'm willing to give it a shot. You know, I want to try this and see if I can make something that gorgeous. Oh, sure you can, Kathy. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Those, oh, I love that. I love that weave structure. And again, yeah, it's Linda Hartshorn weaving in a parallel universe that name three-day workshop starts tuesday wednesday thursday july 19th through the 21st thank you linda thank you next we have karen dondi speaking of color this doesn't look like plain weave this is a two-day workshop it's tuesday wednesday july the 19th and 20th hi karen hi kathy nice to be here glad to have you um, I am going to uh, share my screen and show a few slides. All right. We'll start with this one. Um, I am a weave structure addict, which means before I turned on my off my on my camera today, just now, I had to wipe the drool off my chin from watching the other leaders talk about their workshops. So uh, again, I'll be teaching when they're teaching so I don't get to take those. But who, I tell you, I have never met a weave structure I didn't want to understand and master because finding new ways like these to interlace yarns into cloth is just infinitely fascinating for me. 
Uh, plain weave can be lovely, but I usually get bored about 15 inches in. That said, every once in a while, when the brain needs a bit of a palate cleanser before shifting from one complex structure to the next, it is nice to just simply sit, throw that shuttle back and forth with two feet tromping odds versus evens without even thinking about it. There's a certain comfort level in that familiarity. Plain weave is where most of us started. And it's that comfort level we take advantage of in this two day workshop. We'll be learning and weaving a variety of weave structures, all of which have plain weave as a foundation, either in the interlacements themselves or in the way the cloth is woven. The round robin format will include both four and eight shaft looms. So depending on which loom you bring will determine which draft you get. Warped in, in huck lace, M's and O's, warp rep, integrated plain weave, spider bond, honeycomb, double weave, and deflected double weave. The goal is that for anyone who happens to walk into our workshop room and hasn't been privy to our discussions, to look at the samples and say, this doesn't look like plain weave. So in two days, we can't, uh, of course, do an in-depth study of all these structures, but I will break each down to its plain weave roots so they become more approachable and easier to understand. That connection might involve uh, a plain weave base cloth with a pattern made by regular floats, or it might involve plain weave in multiple layers. And some structures like this one may have two plain weaves interlacing at different rates. Many of those patterning methods actually use treadlings that alternate two sheds, left foot, right foot, just like plain weave, even if I do switch treadles around for different blocks. Do not let the mention of blocks scare you if you haven't already taken the class we heard about just a second ago, as I'm going to discuss some block weave theory and illustrate what a great tool it is for designing many pattern weaves. Every participant will bring a loom pre-warped according to instructions that I'm going to send out in advance. I assign the drafts based on not only the loom a participant is bringing, whether it's, is it four shafts, eight shafts, table loom, floor loom, but also experience level. So I won't get you over your head with the warping. Work width, uh, widths range from seven to 10 inches and materials and set are gonna vary by the structure. And you'll find all about that uh, when I send out the instructions and assign you a draft. I know uh, some people worry about a round robin workshop, um, making it harder to get through all the samples. And I will make sure to have those samples that take a little more time to weave on more than one loom. And I will enforce time limits if we have to. Handouts are gonna include all the drafts, eight different structures, either as PDFs or as WIFs, weaving information files, if you have software. Uh, there'll be some paper and pencil exercises I give out and everybody will get a digital copy of the lecture slides. Um, for supplies, well, it's a weaving workshop. So you will need to bring some things with you in addition to the loom. The yarn, and I'll specify that again when I send out weaving instructions, uh, pen and pencil, some graph paper, some colored pencils, um, some way to store your samples because we're going to be cutting them apart in the workshop. I like a three ring binder with those full page plastic page protectors uh, that slip right into the binder. You'll need your usual weaving kit with scissors, pins, measuring tape. You'll need a bobbin winder, um, although usually somebody brings one that we can to a few people can share. Um, because we're cutting these samples off the loom in the workshop, we'll use either fray check or, or um, glue, you know, watered down glue or something similar to secure the edges when we cut. You'll want to tag all your samples and I recommend tags that are washable so you can wet finish the samples because some of these won't even look like their final cloth until you wash them. Um, 
I like to use old Tyvek envelopes that I've cut into little pieces and laundry marker. And some of the techniques and structures will have some special kinds of tools and supplies needed uh, just for managing them. And I will uh, share those with whoever gets those drafts. Most of it's simple hardware store stuff. This is but, amazing. Oh, thanks. This is wonderful. I love it that you went over the, um, the supplies and those are online also. It's great to know what you need ahead of time. And looks like people can contact you if they have questions. Absolutely. If they're curious about what some of those special supplies might be or just have a question about how it's all going to work, um, either through my website or just email me. You know what I love about Round Robins is you leave with like a treasure trove of all these wonderful samples that have been woven that you can't do on one loom. You need all the other looms set up that way. So I, I love Round Robins for that reason. They're great. I, I've been inspired by many things that have taken me down uh, the rabbit hole just by participating <laughs> in Round Robins. All right, this is this doesn't look like plain weave. It's a two day workshop. It's Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, Karen Dondi will be teaching that. If you want more information about this workshop or any workshop, go to the website um, and you can learn more. You can register there at weavespindie.org slash sessions. You can read about the instructors, the class descriptions, um, and learn more about um, all of the different classes we've had today. Thank you everybody who's been on here. And I agree, I watch these, I just wanna take them all. Um, we've got hotel reservation information on the website. Marriott Knoxville downtown, the Crown Plaza, the Hyatt and the Cumberland House. Be sure you use the link. Don't call up the hotel, most likely they won't have the information. But come join us July 15th through the 21st in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's gonna be a great summer. Thank you all for being here. We have another um, program tomorrow evening at four. Join us then. <music>